Hi, it's Lael from Made by Marley. Welcome back to our channel. Do you want to create jaw-dropping furniture looks with minimal things and minimal effort? Well, if you're interested in creating looks like this, follow along. Okay, so unusually, you're not getting to see what it looked like in the beginning. This was a piece that I already had that I'd base coated and I hadn't done anything else with. Uh, I think I was originally planning on doing something else with it. And so now here it is. So what are we going to be doing with it, first of all? So it's got the two drawers. It's vintage. It's on wheels. It's got two big drawers, two small drawers. The handles have already been removed and it's been painted one coat of Athenian black. OK, so you haven't missed anything. So when you jump in, just paint your furniture black and that's it, you're away. Um, nothing complicated. Uh, what you will need today as we move on is a stencil with a big part and a stencil with some bordered parts. So it can be any sort of stencil you want, just as long as there's a kind of focal and a sort of edging. And then you're away. I'll show you what I've got. I've got uh, this one is my big one. This one is my kind of edging. That's my two, right? This one and this one. Yeah. Yep. But you could use, if you didn't want to do sort of this kind of, a sort of kind of um, Indian, Moroccan, whatever kind of like that, that kind of look, you could use like a Baroque stencil as your big one, quite a big print pattern. It doesn't need to be on this border and go along it like that. You don't even need to use stencils at this point in time. You can get your stamps out if you've got stamps. Anything that you've got that you think that you can recreate the same kind of look. It's an interesting colour palette for me. Not one that you would normally find me really doing. It's going to be black, borderish, with two shades of green, two shades of mustard. Or yellow and a mustard. And if it needs any more colour after that, we'll see. I found my inspiration from a picture of Indian bracelets. So they were they were they were all together and I sort of um I'm gonna obviously add some gold, but there was like a whole row of different shades of Indian bracelets with some black ones, some light green, some dark green, some mustard, and I thought mm, that is a really nice sort of combo. So that's where I got the inspo from. That's why it's worth looking at just anything and going, oh look at this bracelet, <laughs> homing in right in and then knuckle click it and then zoom it out and going that's what I want to do. So that's where the inspo came from. In here I've got. Antibes green, but it had a little bit, you can just see it up the edge there. I did add a little bit of Antibes, um, no, some furrow if you use Annie Sloan paint just to brighten it up a little bit because it is going on black. Remember, whatever goes on the on the black is going to uh, kind of get lost slightly. Um, I'm using a brush. It's not a particularly amazing brush. Now, there is no rhyme or reason to this, and I think this is one that I just really want to have a bit of fun with. So I'm just going to kind of start applying it and I'm just kind of, what I want to do is kind of give myself this sort of little bit, leave myself a little bit of an edge around the drawer, something like that. I don't need to fill it all in. And this is what, you're not really going to miss much for the first few steps because it's just setting the scene for where we get started. Um, if you've never watched me before, this is probably freaking you right out. Um, <laughs> you're, you're probably thinking, oh no. Don't worry, it's all good. If they've watched you before, they'll be not surprised. Yeah. And if they haven't watched you before, they'll be like, this is interesting. As long as you don't go, <laughs> I'm not watching anymore because this woman's crazy. This is all good. This is layers and how to get nice texture on your furniture. And I kind of appreciate and understand that my, my colour choices today are a little bit left field. But when I saw those bracelets, I went, mm, that is the colour. So, I mean, I'm not really kind of labouring too much on where I'm going with that. I think that's probably probably enough for that drawer. And down the edges, you're just going to kind of go in thick and thin. So some thick areas like that, some thinner areas there. Let's just kind of do a bit in here as well, because we might want to put some pattern in there. And just the same down the sides. The top, I'll probably just do the big middle section. The sides, I'll probably just do the whole sort of, as long as I've got a, quite a decent border around it all, um, that's what I'll probably do on the top and the sides. And then you just need to let this all dry just now. And then we'll come back and put our other shade of green, I think, round about it. Or 
We might go straight in with our mustards. I'm not quite sure. That gives me time to think about how to put this all together. Um, just get that up into the air. I might do something like this. Because that's already sort of bringing that out. What are you laughing at, Martin? Is that, you say that all the time. I might do something like this. Yeah, but I'm doing as you, it. As you're doing it. <laughs> yeah, I know. Keeps everybody on their toes because it's it's like a, it's like spoiler alert layer as it happens. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Um, there's going to be other sort of colours that I might mingle in there. Obviously, there's this same at the sides, which I'll do as well. But as I said, big green square on the top, two big green squares on the sides. I'll go off and do that now. Okay, done the green. Well, before I finished off, I had a dry brush, so I just dry brushed down down my edges just to accentuate them a little bit and just kind of run it across there. That's what I did. I did my green on the top, green on the black, on the sides, and now I'm about to apply my mustard. I'm using one of these kind of brushes um, because it'll give it nice texture. It's a bit kind of old. And I've got a mustard colour that I've mixed up here using Tilton, Emperor's Silk, a tiny little bit of Barcelona orange and a tiny little bit of Hornflower. These are all Annie Sloan paints to hit up on a mustard. So I'm going to be doing pretty much the same again. Coming out looking a little bit orangey, but I think it's just the light because when I hold it up to not a different light, it's less orange. My daughter Daisy told me I was overthinking it. <laughs> <laughs> So you're just running that again into there. With this one, we'll go down it because our brush, my brush is wider than um, my piece. Something like that. Just to kind of get the square in there. And again. I saw a rough square in there. And so basically, you know, the drill by now, anywhere you put the green, you just put the orange in the middle. There's no sort of right or wrong how you do it, just as long as you leave quite a bit of green and you don't go over your black. Down this edges, we'll just do something like that. And the same on this side here. Top, I'm going to be doing the bit in the centre, side's going to be doing the bit in the centre and that's going to, we're going to let that dry now. Okay, so we had a little bit of a camera malfunction, don't know what happened, but um, we did film it, but I don't know, just to recap what happened next. After we did the green, I did a mustard coloured square in every green square. So wherever the green was, I then put a mustard square in it. So it goes black furniture, green square in the centre of that mustard square. Now what I'm about to do isn't going to make a huge amount of difference, but it will give a level of slight detail that is um, required sometimes if it's like a big area that we're going to be stenciling over the top of. So I said we were going to be using the two stencils and that hasn't changed, but I'm going to get um, this stamp, it's from the redesign, no it isn't, it's an IOD stamp, it's from the Bohemia stamp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a different colour of mustard to go over the yellow. Now you don't have to worry about getting it right in. I'm just going to take it right across onto the green as well. It's just going to give it another level of detail, but it's not going to be such a contrast. And if you can see here, there's a slight colour, colour variation. That's where I tested it on test just to see you're looking for the same color but a darker tone but not too much that it is going to command all the attention because you want it to sit back when you put your stencil over the top of it so this is just a series of frames and blocks that's it so i have here my stamp my roller and i'm using an acrylic paint for this part which can go over the chalk paint no problem it's just that it is the closest shade to what i'm looking for my glasses on that might help uh, i'm gonna have to move <coughs> sorry about the coughing i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry everybody 
I was just waiting till Martin had choked. <laughs> we are really struggling with the cold, so you're going to get quite a bit of that. I think, Martin, you can kind of cut it out, can't you? I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to apply this across the drawer fronts. Now, in a minute, I'm going to take my drawers out because it's going to be much easier, but it's just an easier way for me to show you right now. And I'm just going to go across all of my yellow, yellow panels and I'll get Martin to quickly have a look up on the top. On the top, what I'll do is I'll go round with a square, leave a border and go round with a square and I'll show you how I do that when I get to there. Um, but yeah, that's all the plan is here. Can you see that? It's it's a variation of this ochre, but it's a, a darker, more pronounced, but it's still in the same colour hue as this and that's what you need to try and do when you're doing these like sort of multiple layer finishes it's the same colour but a variation of the colour you can do them all different colours but this is what I'm doing with this one so I'm just going to get on and I'm going to do all my drawer fronts my sides and the top and then we'll come back and we'll add the next level so as I said I've put that stamp all where the ochre is so down the sides down here down here I'll get Martin to quickly show you the top, on the top, and on the sides, right? Now, generally, what I would normally do is put my small form stencil round the edges and put over the top, but I'm doing it, put my big one over the top, but I'm doing it differently today because I just feel like I'm going to do that. So I'm going to put my big one on first. So this is the big one. Now, I'm going to be using Amsterdam Green, which is this colour here. Obviously, it's an Annie Sloan paint. Got a stencil brush. See, I do actually have the equipment. It's just I never use it. Um, I've offloaded my stencil brush onto a piece of card. I've loaded it up, but I'm making sure that I've not got too much paint on it because the reason why these big stencils with the large gaps are more prone to having bleed through. They just are. There's much more surface area for the paint to go under. So make sure that you've offloaded your brush. These ones always make me slightly nervous. Now, because I've got a keyhole here, I'm going to line the middle one up here. I don't want this bottom shape under here. It reminds me a little bit like Mickey Mouse. I don't I don't want it. So, not that I don't like Mickey Mouse. It's just there's a time and a place. So, um, you're really going to have to make sure you've got a good grip of this one. If you're unclear, use tape or tacky spray. Um, these are the ways to do it appropriately, not the way I do it, where I just, just have been staying for such a long time that I'm kind of, well versed on keeping it where I want it. So that's my stencil one. I'm not using them as a two because there's too big a gap and I want to try and fit as many as I can. So let's just see where. It's always kind of hard to see. Stenciling's always a little bit fun and I like the fun element of, you can never get it quite right, but you can get it the best you can. And again, I'm not, I haven't dipped my paint, my stencil brush back in my paint. Um, it doesn't need any more paint than that. That's just going to cause you a problem with bleed through. If you are getting, I've said this before, if you do have a bleed through problem, try thickening up your paint a little bit and don't do not do this. Do round in a wee swirl like this and you're you're just going to have such a nice, nice crisp stencil. And the last one, let's just see if we can kind of get it right. I'm really winging it now. Let's just see there. This is where I step back and go, oh, these are all squint. Um, now, let's, oh, it had a wee bit of movement there. I'm just going to straighten that up. You kind of have to end up a bit like an octopus when you're stenciling. So that is probably, I mean, you could build it up and be even more complicated. You could bring it round and you could put this edge up in there. I might do some of that in the middle drawer just to kind of shake it up a little bit. I will come back and probably maybe put a bit of Posca detail in here. But as, as a colour palette goes, I am incredibly happy with this colour palette. I really like the greens, the ochres. It's different to what I would normally do and I'm really liking it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the same stencil, going to run it across here, going to run it across here, here. Well, let's just leave the sides for just now and the bottom, this bottom area, I'll run it round in a pattern on the top and on the sides. And when it comes to the sides, I'll stop and we'll do a side together. But the majority now, I'm going to run around with this. And you can see how crisp it is. People get, 
really f scared of using stencils. Stencils are so easy to use. You just need to practice on boards first. But the trick is, I don't, you know what, when you've seen me stencil before, I don't normally use fancy stencil brushes. I normally just use art brushes, but tight, tight brushes, not big loosey goosey, you'll, that because your bristles will go under your stencil. So you need something tight and flat. Um, I don't actually have a paintbrush, but I'll show you in the next clip what kind of paintbrush I would use for it. I mean, this is a bit overkill, it's a bit big, but you know, it does the job. So it was the first thing I hit upon and I've got a whole like kind of plethora of stencil brushes, they range of various sizes. I just don't very often use them because I don't think it's something necessarily, there's a hair on there, that you need to buy. It's a purchase that you can buy later on if, if you want to, try and keep the cost down. So anyway, I'll go and do this now. Okay, so this is what I've done on the top. Okay, I'll show you the front in a minute. And now I'm just going to run the pattern, the same pattern down the sides. Um, and this time I'm using the whole, I'm still trying to avoid this section here. If, a little, if you're trying to work with stencils and you just want a part, you can take these parts off. But if a little bit comes on, it, it's okay because I'm kind of working with that sort of kind of distressed look. And so I'm not, I'm not at this point, you'll see me in quite some of my videos taping it off because I don't want the rest. But in this one, I'm okay with it. I'm not, um, I'm not bothered. So you're just going down here again. And normally there's a telltale sign on a stencil, so you can tell there's a little part here. So you put this little part over that part there in the square, and generally, if you can keep it relatively straight, that might help. Um, then you know that's where your kind of meet point. Quite often with stencils, doesn't they, look straight. it doesn't look straight, Martin. Does that look straight? It's because underneath isn't, you know, like... Um, Use this edge against this edge. Um, okay, no, I think that's good. I'm going with that. So, um, if you do, if you if you've got a stencil that's got a little bit of a hole on it, um, that is where you go for your next stencil. If you're trying to link them and join them together. Now, the thing about this look is, you don't have to be oh. I have to get everything perfect. Everything has to be lined up. I know, like Matt and Shanna, kind of keep me on the track, but I'm not too bothered about you know as long as it because you can see my distress underneath is running down that way as well. I've got more of the green here. We'll we'll do something with that as we go, but all size it and like if you look at sort of like real vintage Indian sort of furniture, they're all a little bit kind of how they've done it, it's just, and it's all about the layers, the layers, the layers, the layers. That is all I can say about this sort of look. And this is actually quite a simple layered look for me. You can go on and do more and more and more and more and more. And the more layers, the more you build up and the more texture and the more interest. So I'm just gonna run this down here. I'm gonna run this down here, same on the other side. You've seen what I've done with the top and then we'll get to start to work with the front again. Okay, so where are we? What I've done next is I have this, I'm using this one out of my stencil and I'm putting it all the way around. It just kind of gives it a sort of more lacy finished effect. Um, um, show which one you uh, it, it, I'm going to keep, I'm going to show them in a minute. I'm going to actually oh. do some. So I've just sat it in the paint, which isn't a good look. Um, I just read a Bob Ross quote. I'm going to get Matt and just, just stick it up above. It's about, you know, all the little imperfections that make things unique and special. And this look is one of those ones that, um, for example, I'm trying to think. Uh, well, I can't see any just yet, but sometimes you touch up against something. This look is a really forgiving look and, and I think it just gives it that hand painted look. So you don't need to worry too much about this. What I'm, why I'm turning around to talk to you about this is this is the part where it can all get a little bit too out of control and overwhelming because you start to go, right, I'm going to put this round here and I'm going to put this round here. And before you know it, you don't know where you're at. So I kind of jumped, you see, my reason for my thinking was I'm going to show you this little green border here down this side and here in a minute. But what I did do was I got the next one, this one here, this one. And I ran it down this bottom drawer and then I started to jump between the two and I thought, no, I stick to the green just now. So it's not the dark green. It's not the Amsterdam green, which we did this with. 
the big stencil and it's not this green that we did the back with. If you take a horrible look at my mix mat, look at the colour of that. That is the colour and how did I adjust my green? I know it looks incredibly messy. It took me a wee while to get the green that I really wanted. So that's why it looks like, um, <laughs> you know, there's been a sort of protest going on. Uh, this is just the same two greens mixed together with a little bit of florence in it, which has given it a little bit more brightness, just so it shows up. I've just, I just kind of roughly cleaned my stencil brush from where the dark green was so that I could use this. And it's just the same process. Just make sure that you offload it. And any sort of fine stencil will do. And this is where you don't have to be totally perfect. You just have to kind of go around it all. And you just, that's a little bit much on my brush there actually. Um, and I'm going to do the same up round all of the apertures. Bring that down a wee bit. And you just kind of make sure I've got that little edge on. And you can miss some bits out. You can make it as clear or as distressed as you want. Sometimes I make it really super clear. But I like the super clear parts to be the, the main focal parts. And you just go around, fill it in your detail there. Whoop, bring that down until you get something that you're looking for. And then I want this on this edge here. And we're just going to run this down here too. Try and join them up the best I can. And, and really, this is the part where, I mean, I'm showing you, but uh, you really, you don't need a lot of stencils to do this look because I think the more you add, the more complicated it can become. But you just need to keep trying, keep to one colour at a time. Don't jump around like what I do because then I think that does become a little bit, kind of, I can even quite easily get overwhelmed by where, 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 what am I go, where am I going and what am I doing? Which brush am I using? Yeah, which brush am I using? So as you said, there was not that you saw there was no real finesse to that. It's just it's just giving it something else. Me by me putting this dark green over the light green, what it's doing is it's giving another layer of interest. And as I said, normally I do this part first, then the big over the top, but I've done it differently today just because I like to mix it up. I'm really still enjoying the colour palette. Once I've done this all the way around. And I'm going to do some of this on the sides as well. And we'll get, to, I'll show you the sides. I've got some gold because I'm going to start introducing quite a bit of gold because the bracelets that I saw obviously were gold coloured. So I don't know if they were actual gold. I've got gold and I've got a short liner, not a fat one, not a thick one. And see this gap here? I am just going to line, line this with gold. And again, you can see I'm not really being that tidy. I do want to step back in and just kind of make this point here. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to introduce the gold. I might bring it up to there. Yeah. I will do some spots here on these with Posca pens. It's just a bit quicker. But now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to probably spend quite a lot of time just going around all of these shapes. And there's an awful lot on the piece. And that's going to take a time and you can see as well the gold is not too glaring like because the colors it's going on to it's going on to the ochre it's not too much in your face yet because i'm still pondering possibly some gold gold leaf in this area what i will say is this little stencil i'm running it around this this the the, the dark edges i've done that too basically all your frames do with a small detail doesn't matter which one you, if it's a packet, if it's a three one like this, you can pick whatever one you fancy or you can use all three, make them all different. Because that's what I did with my drawers. The main focal point, these ones are going up, these ones are coming down. I've got both on this and on this one, I've just got them going down. So there's so many different parts of interest and that's what kind of will pull it together at the end. I think we might do a little bit of gold leafing around here just to make it as usual, but... Um, as far as I'm concerned, I'm going off now to put this, the small stencil detail on the sides, on the top, and paint in the gold, and we're back again. Okay, so I've done the gold. Now the next thing I'm going to show you is, it's just put an audio book on. It's going to take you a while to do the top and the sides and everything where the pattern is. 
So first of all, though, I want to just highlight the drawers. So I'm just using a gold Posca. It's a five, a five M. Um, and I'm just doing this. It's very simple. This is just a little arch. And I think sometimes with these things with me, and you'll find this yourself, the more you do, it's just kind of like muscle memory. Um, your, your brain very quickly gets into the routine of doing it. The more you do it, the more it just becomes second nature and you're not really thinking about it too much. You just one one round. All your drawers, I'll start from this side again. And once you've gone round all your drawers, I was going to put gold leaf on this black part around all the drawers. Oops, I can't talk and point at the same time. Um, but I decided that this might add a sort of other element of, of interest. And then what I'm doing is I'm just putting a wee spot in the middle of each part of the little kind of half circle like that all the way around. And again, it's just muscle memory. You just get used to it. So I'm going to do that. I've done this one and I've done this one over here. I haven't got the bottom one because I'm going to take the bottom drawer out for that to save me kind of trying to lean in. Now, I've, had, I've rooted through my Posca pens to find what I was looking for. So what I've hit upon is I've got a 5M in green, which is the thick. Somebody asked this week about thickness of Posca pens. The ones I always, nearly always ultimately use on furniture. Are, are these ones here which are the 5M but today I'm going to be using um, this is the 1M which is the smallest one there is one in between uh, let me just show you uh, this is a different colour but this is the one in between that's that sort of nib um, it's I can never remember it's a 3M so you've got your 5M your 3M and your 1M, and that's, that's, I'll show you the nibs. Oh. See if I can get any close on them. Yeah, uh -huh. maybe a little better than maybe in black, but you can see. So the 5M is the one in the middle. Yeah. 3M is the one on the left. I've overused this one, that's why it's slightly thicker, but it's normally much thinner when you first get them, and they're sort of rounded one on the 3M. So that's the nibs you're needing, but you don't need to have, this isn't necessary. And, and Posca pens are not cheap. Although they are the best acrylic paint pens I've, I've ever used. I, I Although I do really re rate Artistro as well. So, you know, if you get your mitts on some Artistro pens, you would be just as good. So I'm just doing a spot with the thicker one around this green. Now, this is why I'm saying it's going to take you quite a while. I just want this big shape in the middle to look slightly more ornate. And if you use a more ornate stencil, you probably won't need to do what I'm doing, but it's just, I think it's quite quite crude and I want it to be a little bit neater. So I'm doing that with the 5M. I'm now moving to the 1M just to do some little dots. I want to kind of look at, make it look a little bit like a mandala. It doesn't matter if there's stencil there, you can just go on slightly off the center there on that circle these little things like that just don't matter when you stand back and look at the furniture and what i did to finish it off on this side here because i've done it already on this drawer here is i just got the cream and i just kind of emulated this pattern here but i didn't do it in gold i did it in cream now these ones with this final nib can get a little bit scratchy if you kind of hit it the wrong way in the furniture, you might get some little splatters of paint. So I kind of try and kind of turn it a little bit on its side. But as I said, this part is optional. If you have a more on it stencil, you won't need to do any of this. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to add, I would quite like to do something in the middle here, but I'm not going to because by the time I do all of these and the sides, <laughs> these are the... Drive me mad. <laughs> I know. These are the things if you are taking your furniture to a whole new level and you want people to really look at your furniture, go, oh, wow, look at that. 
these are all the little parts that make people really want to kind of like like get behind your furniture admire your furniture because it looks like you have gone to great lengths to to do what you want to do and i think that if somebody's gonna pay for something of mine i would like it to look i want them to look at it and go oh that's that's really good because that's your base sort of kind of well that's really nice and then they go oh look at that and then they go oh i can really see the detail behind there and that's why they're you're building up all your layers your layers are showing them that the effort and time that you've spent on it so i think it's important but as i said if you have if your stencil is more ornate you don't need to do any of this this is just me going oh i need i need to make this look a little bit more you know because this is quite how i looked at it is this is quite large form this and i wanted to make this much neater and you can see the difference between this one and this one already this already looks more this one with the posca pen looks more ornate than this one this one looks quite um blocky now it doesn't look blocky so we're going from ornate to blocky with the pen that i've put down there we're building up this layer beside this stencil which is separate separates the drawers moving out to the edges where we've got more detail and it's just adding them all together and going right that's what i want to do so i'm going to spend the next three million years just doing these little details on here and then we'll be back and then what we'll probably do is tie together the top i'll give you a brief look at the sides and then i'm hoping that i don't add any more to this but <laughs> I mean, who knows? I might stand back there again and go, ooh. But I'm hoping that at this point, I, this was supposed to be the pared down version of what I do. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is the actual pared down version and I'm showing you quite quickly. But um, I could probably do a whole video on just one drawer front if I really thought about it hard enough. But this is all you need to know to get started. Anyway, I'll get on and do that. Okay, so I'm just giving you a good shot of the top because well, I've kind of not showed you as I was going along on the top. The top was everything we did, the mustard square, then the stamping. And then what I did was, as I did the drawers, I did the dark green there, which left me like that. But because it was a wee bit off, and as I said, these kind of things don't matter so much in this finish. In fact, it kind of makes it. But I had a bit there and a bit there, and I thought, well, what will I do? So I just flipped the stencil round and used the light green that I was using for the thin border to do around here. All I'm doing now is I've put my gold border around this edges, the parts that I can. And with my little, my thin Posca, I'm just kind of doing a different sort of detail with the green. I'm kind of like on the top. And the sides have been done as well. So really, by the time I finish this and I've got all that side to do, um, that'll be me ready to talk about sealing it. But this, all these parts is what you want to make it, what you, how much effort or how much you want to do, what kind of stencil you use. It doesn't have to be an Indian stencil. You can do, achieve these looks with any kind of stencils. You could even do it with floral stencils. Um, yeah, I did have to add a stamp in it because sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of detail. But if I'd brought, my stencils are still quite, they're over in the studio still. So I, um, I just used what I had in the house, but if it had a, a bigger stencil or I just stenciled the back of that, I wouldn't even have needed to stamp it. Um, sometimes as well, if you use a bigger stencil, you can use one stencil to do the whole thing. So it's really just what you've got. It's quite a cost-effective way doing it this way, especially if you decide that you don't want to do the Posca details. You don't, you know, that's Posca pens, as I said, are, are, are a wee bit pricey. They do last a long time. I've got to say that they last multiple, multiple projects. So I think you are investing kind of in your business, but it's not something that you need straight away. It's something that you can um, kind of save up to buy. I didn't have all of the ones I have in the beginning. I only had a few. In fact, before that, I used Artistro. And, and you can look for art, look up Artistro um acrylic markers they're very good i kind of like them ones if we are doing like i'm just going to show you quickly what i'm doing with this outer shape here um i like them for they are they're black and they're white pens um they do um a nice black and white if you're going to get artistro pens and they, there's nothing wrong with them at all i'm just doing for this i'm just doing the inside of here 
and what I'm going to do is I'm just finishing it off with I'm just trying to look at the ones I've already done uh, I'm just doing gold around this edge here so it's still kind of like moving on a pace but it's still quite slow I guess so I'm just going to get on and finish the tabletop um, Martin, do you think you could change camera angles and just show them the completed front? Mm -hmm. um, this is how the front looks now it's all done and I think I've kept you up to speed. You can see there's some little black spots on this. Where I did my little tiny trim, I came back with just the corner edge of this, the top edge, and just did some bigger detail and just put some black in it, just to give it a little bit of thin, thick sort of depth and interest. I really like this one. This is one of my favorites. And I think the reason why I like it so much is the color palette. It's just different for me. I usually do like pinks and reds and burgundies and turquoises and this is a wee bit different it's beautiful yeah so really i'm going to finish off the top i'm probably probably won't even come back now after this i will be sailing it with french chic tough top coat sealer <laughs> <laughs> um i'll be putting a little bit in a takeaway um container pouring it in getting a dish sponge using the green side to hold on to dipping it in and rubbing it over two coats letting it dry in the house and then I uh, once it's completely dry I won't even show you the handles the handles will be a surprise at the reveal and I'll remember to talk you through the handles I'm humming and horn on the handles at the moment um, right now so I'm not even quite sure I'm thinking of maybe just simple pull cut pulls you know the black drawer pulls I'm thinking of just doing something quite simple or maybe getting some of those and maybe doing a paint effect. And if I do, I'll come back and show you what I'm doing on the handles. But who knows about handles yet? But um, it's just a whole load of detail now. And, you know, I think I've ran through all of the steps, especially if you've got the front, you can create the sides. It's just bigger frames. Just expand it out and get a little bit clever with it. Flip it around, turn it around. And these looks are. And this is the simplified version. And it's quite easy to do. So next time you see it, it'll be beautifully staged. I think we'll put some elephants on it. <laughs> I'm feeling quite bougie because I'm in the house. I'm staging the furniture in the house. It's snowing today, so. It's just, just too cold over there. Too cold. So I thought I'd just stage it over here. I'm in the bedroom. It's, the cladding's already here for it, and it looks quite nice. So I said I wanted to give you a snapshot on the handles that I picked at the end. These are sort of, I think they're grasshoppers. Mm, sort of bugs, I'm not quite sure. Let's say they're grasshoppers. They're quite cute. They go with the overall look. And because the handles that had been previously on here were just screwed on to the front, obviously there was no holes or anything because they'd all been film, fill, filled in. So Martin just re-measured it all up and put my handles in. So that's my handles. What did we do to achieve this? This look is, it always makes people go, oh, wow. But it really, when it's broken down to the steps, it's very simple. Base coat, frame, frame within a frame, stamping or stenciling something small scale for interest behind it. Stencil, stencil your edges. That's it. And as I said, keep your colour palette to a few colours of paint. The more paint you add, the more confusing it can get. And also, the more stencils you add, it can sometimes get confusing and a little bit overwhelming, especially if you're doing a massive great big dresser. Uh, ask me how I know that one. So I like the colour palette. It's unusual for me. This is not my usual fare, not these sort of colours. And as I said, my inspo was those bracelets. I'll see if I can find a picture of them to, so that Martin maybe can put in the end. And remember that Bob Ross quote that I was telling you about things? Don't, it's the little imperfections that make things good make them unique it makes them different um so you know and this look is the most forgiving look you will find it just is it's it's the look i am best known for in the uk it is the look that i find that i'm most at home painting and the variations the colors the patterns the stencils the stamps everything you can use you could do it forever in a day and it would always be different so these are good looks to master, good ones to create and incredibly simple. So that has been it for this week. 
all cosy and warm in the book room and uh, we will look the lovely man and I will see you next week but before I see you, I would like to say if you've enjoyed this video give it a like and um, please consider sh sharing it I'm, I'm, I jumped the gun there see I've never ever really got really good at this because it's just sharing it and uh, leave me a lovely comment and do not forget to subscribe we are trying to get to 7k by Christmas and we've got a couple of hundred to get and I think we might just get there so um, if you're on the, the fence and you're not quite sure, have a look through our back catalogue and see all the kind of furniture looks that I do. And I think there is, I do them all really. So um, there'll something, be something different every week. There'll be something different. I mean, sometimes it's the same, but recreated in a different way. And uh, so, and this one, the highlight, I think for this one is the Posca pen details. We can really do a lot with Posca pens, but as I said, Posca pens are expensive. So if you maybe think of buying artistral pens, their tonal colours, like the black and the white, are brilliant. They're not so great with the colours, but their black and white are brilliant. And you could do this with white. Can I just say something about black. Posca pens? Posca, Posca do a set of pens. I think they call it the Bohemian Colours, I think. I'll see if I can drop a link. I'll put a link in the description. I didn't know and that. That's all, and that pack, there's about eight different colours in it, and that's always a, a discounted price. It's kind of like an introduction to, pes to Posca pens. So it's a good set to get started with. That was the first set that Mel had. Yeah. Yeah. Martin is the purchaser <laughs> in <Yes>. the business. <laughs> I don't know. These things arrive. They're a mystery to me. I like them. I say, oh, I'd like that. But then they arrive. It's great. But Martin gets them from... Hobby Craft, which I think is... It's in the UK. It's in the UK. That's not Hobby Lobby, though, is it? No. No, I'm sorry. It's not Hobby Lobby. It's a company called Hobby Craft, and they always have a deal on... If you're in the UK, they always have deals on Posca pens. Always. They are the cheapest that we have found. By far. By far. Yeah. Um, And they ship quite quickly, two to three days. I mean, you know, it's not instant, but it doesn't matter. I mean, I wouldn't go to places like Amazon for them because they are so... Um, yeah, so Posca pens are another good thing in your armory for furniture as far, as far as I'm concerned. They're 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 good to go. Uh, anyway, I was nearly getting to the point where I was about to go, and now I'm back. Now not going, <laughs> but I'm going this time. So say goodbye. <laughs> I'll see you next week, you lovely people. And Martin, do you want to say anything? No, as just, usual. Just goodbye. Just thank you very much, everybody, for sticking with us, and um, to all the new subscribers, welcome. Lovely to have you, and we'll see you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.